Hi there, my name's Jamie Keane, I'm the lead game designer on Far Cry 3, and this is... Mark Thompson, I'm the level design director. So what we're going to show you today is we're going to show you a, a run-through. So you find yourself to begin with in Amanaki Village. Now this is one of, the, one of the hubs in the game. It's kind of a friendly area where you can rest, recuperate, you're going to feel a bit of the life of the world, but you're never under threat here. You can also do things like you can go to the store and buy new weapons and things like that, but it's basically your, your safe haven in the world. I was out hunting this morning, got lucky. So at this point, if you look at the mini-map, um, it doesn't have a lot of useful information on it. Um, actually, it's almost entirely useless, apart from the radio tower icon you can see there. Um, whenever you get to a new area of the world, the map will look like this. Um, so the first thing you need to do is find the nearest radio tower, which is generally um, a visible landmark on the horizon. And then you need to head up there and take off the, uh, the GPS scrambling device, which uh, Vas and his pirates have put there. So they're always going to be pretty much on, in high places in the world, areas that you're going to find easy to see. We wanted to make it a slightly different challenge to the rest of the gameplay. A lot of the gameplay in the world is combat oriented, whereas this we wanted to make much more of a kind of a jumping puzzle. This one's the first one that you come across in the world, so it's a really light challenge. But later on in the world, it's going to become a little more tricky. We want to emphasize that feeling of vertigo, so you're going to have some pretty gnarly jumps to try and make. Um, you're going to hear the wind kind of rattling through this thing. You're going to hear it creaking. So later on, it becomes much more of a challenge. But for now, this is a pretty easy one. It's a fairly straightforward route straight up to the top. Yeah. But, I mean, the level designers did get a little bit mean with the later ones. More than a little bit, I'd say. Yeah. Some of them. But in a good way. It's a good job they don't do anything like put their names in the credits so everybody knows who they are. You can't find people on the internet like no, that anymore. No, no, no. Alright, so you can see the, uh, a bit of the size of the scale of the world. We're showing about 1 20th of the world in this demo, so you can just take a little bit of a look around and you can see the kind of the, the overall scope of, of the game as a whole. Everything you can see in the world, you can get to at any time. And you can explore, and when you get there, the world will reward you for doing so. It'll be fun. With these reveal sequences, we want to show you a little bit of, of the world, some sort of suggestions on areas where you can go to explore afterwards. If you take a look around on the horizon as well, you'll see these kind of black smoke stacks. Now, these are the outposts that are scattered around the world. And they're probably your best next step. So you can see the big red areas on the map. Um, they dictate that the pirates control this part of the world. So when you move around the world, uh, you might be ambushed, you might come across roadblocks as you're driving around. Um, but what you can do is, if you head to the outpost, you can actually take it back um, and claim this part of the island um, as your own, well, as, as yours along with the rebels, the racket. So gradually as you move through the world, you end up kind of cleaning the map. And taking it back for the locals, which in turn makes life easier for you as you move around. Right, so we spotted a couple of goats. So we're going to kill the goats with extreme prejudice. It was quite unfriendly, I thought. That was more unfriendly, though. Yes, certainly. Yeah. All right, so we skinned the goats, so now we've got a skin from the goats. So we can use that to craft. This is the crafting menu. Um, and in here, you can see all the different things that you can use um, animal skins to craft. Right now we're going to go and we're going to craft a weapon holster, which is going to let us then carry four weapons. The loadout that you have in this demo is, is a little bit... We kind of cheated slightly just so that it was, it was more fun to play for the demo, but normally you would have to build up from pretty much nothing. You know, you start off in the world and it's... You start off like Jason starts off in this world. You know, he's this young 25-year-old guy without much of a clue, and uh, he's kind of got a gun and nothing much else, so there's a parallel there between the way that Jason starts in the world and the way that you start in the world. Again, the, the locals need the help of um, a plucky young hero. Um, <laughs> Jason hears the call, Link. Of, call of duty and sees a, an opportunity for a medal of honor, so he heads out <laughs> into, the into, the battlefield. into the battlefield <laughs> to try and resolve the crisis um, in uncharted territory. And it's kind of the borderland between the series. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're here at the outpost now. Now we've got the camera out, which is going to give us a kind of a bit of a chance to, to look around and spot some enemies, tag them so we can work out a better route, a better path. This is one of the things that wasn't part of Far Cry 2, really, but um, it, was, uh, it was a cool feature in Far Cry 1 that we, uh, we liked, so we brought it back. 
And these outposts as well, they're going to really change the feel of the world. If you take them out, then you control the area and then uh, the Rakia are going to move in. It's no longer going to be enemy controlled, it's going to be friendly controlled. So it's much easier for you to move around in the world. But you've got to take it out first. And one of the things you want to avoid is, is getting these guys to set the alarm off. So you can, you can approach with just all guns blazing or you can charge in and, and, uh, and well, not charge in, in fact, um, but take it a bit easier and try and do more of a stealth route. Spot the guys first, try not to get spotted. If they do spot you, they're going to run for an alarm, so you want to stop them setting that alarm off. Alright, so we're trying to do a bit more of a stealth route here. Got to be a bit careful. That, that, that white line you can see there is a detection meter. If that fills up, they're going to spot you and then combat's going to start. So we've used a rock there to distract that guy. So he's going to go and check that out. And in the meantime, we can go off and head off around here and do a uh, death from above. Okay, so he's now alerted. So these guys, are, you can see he's heading over for the alarm there. That's a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> a little too good, I might say. Alright, so it's all kicked off now because I can hear you. So this is the thing. I mean, once you do go weapons loud, it's it, the world reacts to it, and the world's going to come and find out and see what you're up to. And it's not just the guys in the outpost. If there are any patrols that are moving around the area, like boat patrols might come in from the ocean, or any guys driving along the roads nearby, they're going to hear gunfire, and they're all going to be attracted. Another good shot there, I think. If I'm a little too good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you set the alarm? <laughs> Through the guy. So we've got the, the quest on the board right nearby. We've also got this hunting quest down here. The other thing it's done is opened up a fast travel node. Now, fast travel is something we really wanted to get into the game so that you decide how you move around the island. Here we can see the weapons store. Just going to go and upgrade one of the weapons that you've got. But yeah, you can stock up on any ammo that you're missing. Uh, you can buy consumables like health packs and body armor. Mm -hmm. You can buy maps as well if you're interested in exploration. It's going to show you where all the uh, all the different collectibles are. You can see where all the tre chests are. You can see where all the relics and all the lost letters and the memory cards are. All right, so this is the weapon upgrade system. So each weapon has a different set of upgrades that you can use. Really good idea if you want to play more stealthily is to, is to find a weapon that has a sound suppressor like this MP5 here. And you can also paint it pretty colors. Devilishly red. Devilishly red. red. Yes. All right, moving up to take this quest, which is just on the board over here. That is said that the jungle would speak to me. So the villagers in Amanaki have had some problems with uh, with local bears. They've been killing them, I guess. That's the problem they've had with them. They've been dying by bear. <gasps> and the so, thing with these as well is we want to add a sort of a gameplay challenge as well. So it's, it's not just going to be a question of of getting in there and shooting them. However, but we want to add a little bit of a challenge in terms of the weapon that you can use. So this one, you've got to use a shotgun to take these bears out. You've also got to find out where the bears are. So you've got that 3D objective marker, sorry. You can use a knife as well. Oh yeah, you can use a knife too, yes. But, yeah. Knife versus bear. It's a bad life choice. Always a good choice, always a good decision. All right, so we're coming up on the quest location now, so we've got to go and pick up a shotgun. And you can see on the mini-map, we've just dipped into a, a new undiscovered part of the world. So if we, uh, if we didn't want to go and kill these bears, um, we could head off to that radio tower um, and unlock a new section of the map and unlock some new side quests and things to do. But right now, we're going to go and shoot bears. In the face? No, well, I decided not to go within the face because... That would be too efficient. It would be. But there we can see it. All right, now, bears can take a lot of punishment and they pack a real punch, as you can see there. When you get hit by them, you really know about it. I've seen it go a lot worse than that. Definitely. 
Well, that's the thing, because you feel all confident because, you know, they're not closing very quickly and then suddenly knock you over. Yeah. All right, so we're into the cave now. This is a, it's a whole new uh, dimension, I guess, that we added to uh, Far Cry, is um, lots of interior spaces. There's something that the, te the tech couldn't do back in, uh, in Far Cry 2, so it's something we added, so you'll have lots of... Um, and it just adds lots of interesting avenues for exploration. Lots of cave networks, tunnels underground, old mines, old temples. And there's always something to do and find down there. It's true. And you have a flashlight as well, so you can see where you're going. Indeed. Adding other dimensions, really. It's going to interplay in our experiences. <laughs> yeah, I mean, physically and so. metaphysically. <laughs> so we added uh, Hell and uh, Riley Air. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the last area, we headed to the radio tower first so we could figure out the lay of the land and decide what to do next. But in this instance, we just sold the smokestack um, and headed straight for it. And there's no real, there's no order that you need to do anything. Um, no, I mean, you don't have to do any of these things if you don't want to, it's just gonna make it more, more difficult to, oh, I think I heard a tiger. Ah, yes. It's kind of forced the hand on the stealth issue there a little bit, I think. Yes, a little too close to the outpost there. Explosive arrow. But they, they don't know quite where you are yet. They just heard the gunfire and they come and investigate. Oh, and this is the best explosive arrow ever. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I know I'll start a fire. So you can see there we use a few different uh, types of arrowhead. Um, they're actually craftable items. So you're not just stuck with, uh, the, like the bow is a, is, a, is a super cool stealth weapon for long range kills. Um, but you can also go uh, craft uh, fire tips and explosive tips. So you can be uh, more versatile at long range. But it still stays stealthy even if you've got those kind of like more full on arrowheads on them. Stealthy explosions. Yes. Stealth explosions. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should do that in the real one as well actually. <laughs> stealth explosion. So yeah, this one, when the stealth thing went out the window, I think it was just all guns blazing. Oh, and the alarm's been triggered as well. Great. But you can see we've got, uh, obviously the fire tech is back from Far Cry 2. I wanted to really make sure that, that we kept that one in. It's a really important part of the gameplay. You can you can really kind of corral people using, the, using fire. And the wildlife as well. And the wildlife too. Now you may have heard just on the on the VO there, they're letting you know which direction that they're coming in from. So you can kind of prepare if you've got a little bit of time, you can see that countdown ticker, and you can kind of prepare for when these guys come in. That was a warm welcome. Yes. And there he goes, flying through the air. No fun was had there at all. Uh no. No, no, no I didn't enjoy that at no, all. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the bit where you uh, you missed everyone with the arrow at the really? start. Really? Still, seriously? <laughs> man and uh, that's the end of the walkthrough today so thanks very much for listening in Far Cry 3 is coming out on Xbox 360 PS3 and PC uh, looking forward to seeing you guys out there